All right, our last video for this chapter is going to talk about DNA. DNA is actually a really cool um, is is a really cool uh, molecule to look at, and very unique in what it is. And this slide should actually picks up right where the last one left off. So if you remember uh, during cell division, um, they are going to ensure that they have enough for each side. So going into DNA replication with that. So remembering back on cell division, how did that DNA replicate? Well, in order to look at that, we want to first figure out what DNA actually is. Um, this is Rosalind Franklin, uh, one of the uh, heroes of the bio biology world. Um, she is the first one to actually photograph DNA. So she used x-rays to look at it, and we actually got a picture from it. Um, she is actually a pretty influential person in the bio biology world. Um, but again, we're going to credit her with the actual physical uh, evidence to uh, the discovery of DNA. Um, these two guys, again, very prominent in the bio biology world, is um, James Watson and Francis Crick. Uh, Watson and Crick decided to make a model of that actual DNA that Rosalind Franklin took photos of. So they're the ones that actually put together the um, complexity of the DNA molecule and were able to build a larger version of it so people can study it and actually realize what's going on with it. Um, so here, I'm going to move my picture out of the way a bit, is our DNA molecule. It is a double helix structure. It looks like a, a ladder that is kind of twisted. Um, that's a double helix shape. Um, our sides of our ladder, um, oh, sorry, over here, are going to be made up of a sugar called dioxyribose. And our rungs of our ladder, you can see the ones with all different letters on here, are made up of nitrogen bases. If you look closely, you'll see that we only have four nitrogen bases. You have an A and a T, a G and a C, and they all kind of just repeat in a different order here. But you'll note that A and T are always together, and G and C are always together. But yeah, that's our structure of DNA. Um, our nitrogen bases uh, are going to include the A, T, G, and C. A stands for adenine, T stands for thymine, G stands for guanine, and C stands for cytosine. Yes, you need to know those words, so you might want to make flashcards to remember that. Uh, you'll also take note that thymine and adenine always pair up, guanine and cytosine always pair up. Um, so bases are on one side and they pair with the base on the other side of the rung. So we have kind of a break in the middle here. As you can see, adenine and thymine kind of fit together, guanine and cytosine fit together, thymine, adenine, cytosine, and guanine. So they will always pair with their buddy. Um, the replication process is going to start by the DNA unzipping up along those rungs. So your adenine and thymine are going to break apart, and your guanine and cytosines are going to break apart. And we're going to open up the middle of that double helix structure. Then we're going to get some uh, RNA molecules that are going to bring over other nitrogen bases and attach them to it. Because of the fact that adenine and thymine only pair together, then if on one side I have an adenine and the other side I have a thymine, I unzip it. I need to find something that matches with that adenine. Thymine will be the only one that will fit there. So it will always get you the same copy. Um, occasionally, uh, your DNA doesn't necessarily unzip correctly. Occasionally, it can't find a nitrogen base to put in there. Um, those are fairly rare. Um, Occurrences, but that's what we call a mutation when that happens. Um, but in general, because uh, they only pair with one another, adenine and thymine, guanine and cytosine, you are going to get di identical DNA when you're done uh, with the replication process. So here's a nice little picture of it. You can see our double helix structure here, and then our picture kind of straightened it out. We unzipped it from the uh, beginning of it. And then we have 
RNA molecules bringing over your different nitrogen bases and pairing it up with both sides and in the end you will have two strands of the DNA from the one original.